This is International Radio Serbia. As usual, we begin our broadcast with the news. Prime Minister Aleksandar Vucic and Russian Ambassador to Serbia Aleksandar Chepurin have assessed that there are possibilities for the improvement of economic cooperation between the two states, especially in the field of agriculture and construction industry. The session of the Mixed Committee for Cooperation of Serbia and Russian Federation is expected soon. It was pointed during the talks. Vucic thanked Chepurin for the principled stance of Russia and the support in the UN Security Council with regards to the resolution on Srebrenica. Prime Minister Aleksandar Vucic stated that the deficit in the Republican budget will be at the level of 2.87% of the GDP by the end of the year. He said that on this day the deficit has amounted to 25 billion dinars, which is in line with the plan set between Serbia and the IMF, and even better than that. Vucic reminded that a year ago the law on labor was adopted and it marked the beginning of the difficult and serious reforms. He added that the talks on the increase of wages and pensions in the public sector will commence in August. That increase will be less than the IMF would approve, but certainly more than just symbolic, the Prime Minister underlined. Serbian Prime Minister Aleksandar Vucic and Chinese Ambassador Li Manchang assessed that political and economic relations of the two countries are excellent and represent a good foundation for improvement of economic cooperation. They also noted that the modernization of the Belgrade-Budapest rail line could start before the end of the year. Vucic expects that financing models would soon be agreed so that the implementation of the project that is of vital importance for Serbia could begin before the end of the year. Ambassador Manchang said that in China there is huge interest in investing in Serbia. The officials also consider that the projects that involve Chinese companies, especially in the field of road infrastructure and energy, such as the building of a new block of thermal power plant Kostolets. The summit of China and the 16 countries of Central and Eastern Europe will be held in Beijing at the end of the year. Prime Minister Vucic will also participate in the summit, which will be an opportunity for new deals, the Chinese ambassador stated. Kosovo Minister for Dialogue, Edita Tahiri, announced that belgrade pristina Dialogue will resume on August 5th, when all technical aspects of the Agreement on Mutual Recognition of Insurance Policies will be specified, followed by the agreement implementation. Tahiri said that Dialogue in Brussels will resume as there has been no official request to end it. Late last week, implementation of the earlier agreement on cancellation of taxes and car insurance paid at the administrative crossings between Kosovo and the rest of Serbia, but the agreement has not been implemented yet. At the International Chemistry Olympiad in Azerbaijan, the Serbian selection won four medals. The students of Serbian high schools have taken one gold, two silver and one bronze medals. The Chemistry Olympiad gathered more than 300 competitors from 75 countries. And with this, we end the news for today. This is the International Radio of Serbia. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. This is the International Radio of Serbia. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. This is the International Radio of Serbia. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Prime Minister Aleksandar Vucic stated that owing to the small surplus in July as well as in the first half of the year, but also the deficit level of 2.87% at the end of the year, Serbia will be able to start the negotiations with the IMF in August in view of raising pensions and some salaries. He told the press conference that it will not be just a symbolic increase, but also it will not get back to the level before the reduction. Yelitsa Tapuškovic has more. Exactly one year after the beginning of the difficult economic reforms, which mostly affected the poorest citizens in Serbia, the Prime Minister says that excellent results have been achieved, such that only a few European countries can boast. According to him, it means that the citizens have taken a serious approach to reforms and the reward will be the increase of salaries and pensions. The pensions will be raised in all categories, while the wages will be increased only in the education, health protection, army and police. Of course, it first has to be approved by the IMF. The increase will not be just symbolic, but it will nevertheless be under the degree that the IMF might approve. I will take the role of the bad guy and play the bigger screw than the IMF. 
The reason is that I want us to have stable public finances, low fiscal deficit safety for the future investments in Serbia, and because I am sure that the Serbian citizens now understand what we have been doing so far. I am especially glad and honored by the praise coming from Germany, from the northern Protestant countries, which appreciate the results of hard work. That work, patience and perseverance of our people will pay off in the end, emphasized Vucic. As some of the accomplishments in the previous year, he pointed to the battle against grey economy, tax collection and increased production. Besides the growing number of tourists, the citizens have shown interest in using the vouchers for the program My Serbia, said Vucic, adding that also considerable profits have been made by the Nikola Tesla airport and Air Serbia. The Serbia gas has settled the debts toward the Russian partners and the collection of VAT in the public companies has been increased. The Prime Minister stressed that the works and the construction of roads and corridors are making progress, and he announced the completion of the Corridor 10 by the end of 2016. As the main goals in the upcoming period, he stressed the reform of the public administration and preserving the political stability. It all should help in improving the living standard and country's development in 2016. Unfortunately, there will be nobody to inform the diaspora and foreign public about those achievements via the shortwaves. Coming up next is another edition of our regular feature, Music Heritage, presented by Germain Filipovic. Today's music heritage is dedicated to the Orchestra of the Academic Culture and Art Association, Branko Krsmanovic of Belgrade. We will begin our story by listening to melodies from Branje from the album Silk Thread, the orchestra led by artistic director Dusan Šaponja, recorded for Radio Television Belgrade in 1979.
The Ensemble of Folk Dances of the Academic Culture and Art Association, Branko Krsmanović, was founded in Belgrade in 1945 as part of cultural and artistic activities of Belgrade University students. The Big Folk Music Orchestra was established in 1952 under the leadership of the violinist Vlastimir Jelic. An independent folk music section was formed in 1957. Since then, this orchestra and the vocal soloists have won a number of awards at numerous competitions in the country and abroad, the most valuable being the gold medal won at the World Youth and Student Festival held in Moscow in 1957. We continue our feature, Music Heritage, with another number from this album. It is a song entitled O oh Maiden, My Sweetheart, performed by Dusko Ljubičić and the orchestra Branko Krsmanović. Apart from great achievements in spreading our culture and art throughout the globe, the orchestra has grown to be a unique group that successfully accomplishes another significant task. It has influenced a large number of young people who, on leaving the association, occupy important positions in all spheres of life. Thus, the orchestra includes members who are today university professors, professional musicians, physicians, mathematicians, ministers in the Serbian government, engineers and translators, including your today's presenter, who had the privilege to perform as a violinist with this remarkable orchestra. 
We shall wind up today's edition of Music Heritage with a medley of folk tunes.
At the end of today's program, we would like to thank our friends and listeners of the International Radio Serbia who started a petition for the survival of our house at the address www.ipetitions.com, Serbian AIDS International Radio. The fate of our radio is still uncertain because the Serbian government has not decided whether to finance the existence of the National World Service. Dear friends, you have listened to the English service of the International Radio Service broadcast, into which you can tune on 6,100 kHz in Europe or 6,190 kHz in the United States. We would like to thank you for your attention and for tuning in, but we will be glad to receive your critics, objections and suggestions, for which you can contact us through our email address radiou at sbb.rs or on our regular mail hilandarska2. 11,000 Belgrade, Serbia. Also, you can visit our website www.glasserbia.org.